Hey everyone, it's Alex Savage from KTVU, Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. And when it comes to the coronavirus, people who vape are at greater risk here in terms of the outbreak. And for more uh, on exactly what this risk looks like here, we're, we're joined by Dr. Hansa Bargava, who is a pediatrician and the senior medical director at WebMD. Dr. Bargava, it's always good to talk with you. Uh, you specifically, we have a lot of concerns about young people vaping, teenagers uh, doing this. Uh, what, how, how are they increasing their risk uh, when it comes to the coronavirus? Yeah, absolutely. Well, just to, to give you background context, uh, if people don't remember, in January and February and even earlier, the FDA and CDC were quite concerned with vaping in our young people. In fact, there were over 5 million teens that were vaping at that time, about 2,700 hospitalizations, and actually about 68 deaths. So it was an issue even before COVID, coronavirus came up, right? And uh, then there was coronavirus. And what they found was in studies in Wuhan and also a number of other studies that there's been an increased risk of serious lung complications from people who, be, who smoke or vape uh, uh, from COVID. And also there's an increased uh, death and, and death rate as well. And so basically you can say it increases from two to four times as much likelihood of being hospitalized if you have COVID, if you have underlying vaping or smoking. What, what is it in particular um, about vaping and what it, what it does to the lungs that, that puts such a patient at greater risk? Well, what's particular is about three mechanisms. So first of all, uh, the cilia that are in, in the lungs, if you are vaping or smoking, there's damage to the cilia. And cilia are little, like little projections in the lungs that actually get rid of toxins and um, you know, other mucus or whatever else. So if you don't have that defense mechanism, that can actually cause problems. The other thing is that there's been studies to show that it actually affects cells that pick up, you know, that kind of are the scavenger cells that pick up toxins. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in one study, Alex, uh, they looked at um, people being exposed to smoke or you know, vaping liquids that weren't even smokers themselves, and they found differences in the genetics of those cells within two hours of exposure. So it's that quickly that you can have exposing expo, um, lung damage. And thirdly, I would say, and we've talked about this, but all the hygiene that we're talking about, and you know, one of the one of the things about hygiene is to not share drinks or food because you don't know if somebody's yeah. asymptomatic, right? And if kids are sharing joints, well, they're sharing something from mouth to mouth, and that that can actually increase the risk as well. Yeah, and a, lo a lot of these uh, vaping devices, so oftentimes shared, I, I believe, right? I mean, especially with young people, they might just sort of, you know, take turns on that. that. That's not a good idea at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's just so many reasons not to. And then, of course, we haven't even discussed the issue about secondhand, secondhand smoke or vape from that as well. And Alex, I would point out that there's one other issue that, you know, the FDA and CDC realized once they started investigating vaping, and that is the fact that a lot of the vaping liquids are done in garages or underground. And so there's a lot of additives that are added on and, you know, toxic additives such as vitamin E acetate and THC and a lot of other toxins that can actually cause lung damage as well. So um, that's actually setting up the lungs for a uh, fertile COVID infection, so to speak. So it, 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 do we know, is there a correlation between uh, uh, vaping and e-cigarette use and, and the large number of young people that we have seen getting seriously ill from COVID-19? Have we, have we drawn a link there? Yeah, there's, the research is uh, still being done, but there's certainly association of uh, hospitalizations, serious lung disease uh, with, you know, people who are smoking or vaping versus those who aren't. So you're definitely increased, have at, a, at an increased risk. Yeah. Um, so you talk about what uh, what vaping does, um, do, to, you know how it how it puts the body in a position, you know, where where it's less able to fight off uh, infection from from the coronavirus. It, what is the evidence? Do we have evidence of of worse outcomes in general for uh, either smokers or, or or people who are vaping? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the studies that have been done so far, and that includes uh, smaller studies and bigger studies and meta-analyses where they just look at everything, uh, have found that the people who had a history of smoking or uh, vaping 
we're much more likely to have serious complications. In fact, so much so that there's certain um, organizations that have come out with statements against vaping in this time of COVID. And in fact, UCSF, right in your corner, mm-hmm. um, you know, of the country, actually has protocols based on whether a person has history of vaping or smoking, uh, and they come in with COVID and how they treat those people. All right. So let let's specifically talk about young people, teenagers. Yeah. We know, um, are, you know, in many cases are are, are vaping. Um, do, do you think, you know, do you think the concerns about catching the coronavirus might be enough to to get uh, some of these young people to to give up vaping? Uh, you know, if they didn't quit before this outbreak. I think that I, I'm going to go back to my pillars that I always talk about, and that is really to raise the issue with your kids and teens, mm-hmm. because you know, one of the facets of teenage or you know adolescence is that you almost have this um, feeling that you're, you know, you are not going to be affected by anything bad out there. Uh, you know that things can happen, but you're almost like this. It's almost a Superman syndrome. Yeah. Like, Right. So it's really important to um, speak to them about this. And this is a great opportunity to speak to them and speak to them frequently about it, because I can't answer whether teens are going to be okay with it or not. Hopefully they are because they're listening to the news. But there's always a good it's always a good idea to actually speak to them and speak specifically about how the harm can be done. And then also really important. And I have heard of stories of this as a pediatrician but really important to say that when you take something from someone else, whether it's a gummy or a tablet or um, you know, a joint or even a cigarette or a drink, you don't know what's in that, right? And that could be you know, infiltrated with any kind of toxin, whether it's spiked, quote unquote, or whether it's a designer drug or it's fentanyl lacing, like it just, you don't know. So you always say no to anything that is handed to you. Yeah. I'm from a very trusted source. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, obviously, ideally, um, you you would you would want your your child, uh, you know, who who is a young adult, to 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 quit vaping altogether. Would there is would there be any benefit during this particular outbreak to just do, doing it less often? I mean, I know that sounds strange. Yeah. I mean, ideally, you just wouldn't do it. Um, but you know, when you, when you talk about how it sort of, um, weakens your defense system yeah. against coronavirus and makes you more susceptible, I mean, is there any benefit to doing it just less often? It, there's huge benefits. So basically the one other study that was done on smoking, not vaping, but what they showed was that not only do smoke, do smokers have a higher risk, but if you quit smoking, mm-hmm. so you're not an active user, you're a former user already the lung system starts recovering so that you're less at risk than if you're actively using. So I cannot emphasize enough right now to teens and adults that, you know, putting your vaping right now, even if it's, and and I know that there's a lot of stress right now. So people have different vices for the stress. Like mine lately has been chocolate chip cookies. Um, (laughs) You know, some people reach for wine. Vaping or anything that's smoked is just not a good idea. So whether it's because it's of stress and yeah, sure, like go ahead and have that donut instead. I would never say that, but you know, that's fine. Um, or if you're nic- a nicotine, you're combating nicotine addiction, you're an adult, then you know, talk to your doctor about other ways to combat that. And you know, I know that it's very hard to combat that. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't. So I think that right now with COVID-19, we just have to be really, really careful about what we inhale. All right, so uh, from a parent's perspective, um, yeah. how, how, do you, how do you approach the subject? Well, what's, what's the best way to approach your, your son or daughter uh, about, you know, to talk about the dangers of, of vaping, you know, as they coincide with the coronavirus outbreak? I, I, I was reading that you, you had this discussion with your kids. Oh. I do, and they are so sick of me talking about it. <laughs> they usually right, well, I'm, I'm not. So I want to. I want to hear. I want to hear how you, how you you know how you lay this out for them. <laughs> right. Um. So you know, I'll, if there's an op, the best way to bring it up, honestly, is if there's an opportunity, like that's you know the window of opportunity. I call, and that's like you're hanging out, you're watching a movie, and you see someone pick up a cigarette, right? You can kind of launch into that naturally. Um, Also, like if you're in the car, you know, carpool is a great time to talk to your teens, right? Um, But mostly, I would say that, you know, anytime you have an opportunity to talk about it, you should. And, you know, broach it. 
as as if they are adults like how would you talk to an adult about it you know br brush it carefully if you tell them what to do they won't leave it but if you kind of point to other scenarios like where you've heard of someone who's died or oh my god like i saw a news article about covid19 and more people who were smoking were um likely to be hospitalized that's a great way to bring it up because it's not so confrontational with teens so i think i think that's really important yeah, yeah, letting them know, you know, it, you know what the reality is in terms of, you know, uh, how how smokers and, and and you know folks who vape are uh, are are doing when it comes to to battling this uh, virus. What is what is your your final message to um, anyone, whether it's young people or or whether it's adults um, who are are vaping right now? How you know how would you try and convince someone that uh, this is this is as good a time as there will ever be to to try to get this up? You know what, I think it's it's prevention, right? Prevention is the cure right now with COVID-19 because there's no vaccine. There's really no known particular medication that can stop, right? So prevention is the cure right now. So prevention equals not exposing yourself or putting you yourself in the crosshairs of COVID-19. And that is stop vaping. If you're vaping, it's not a good idea. Find something else to do. Um, and then I would also say the other prevention methods, if you really do care about your health and of others' health, do the things that prevent also. And that includes like doing exercise because that actually increases your lung capacity. Deep breathing can help as well. And then just take care of yourself from a nutrition and sleep standpoint. So those, all those, those to me are pillars. And I try very hard to exercise these days because the silver lining about COVID-19, Alex, as you and I know, <laughs> is that you have more time in your hands. And yes, it might yeah. be with your kids, but... <laughs> It also gives you that car time back where you can take that 20 minutes of exercise because it'll help your lung function. Yeah, no, it's a it's a real great point. And, and, and just to hit on one other point that you just made, which is that it, it, it's not too late. Um, yeah. You know, quitting, I think that's, you know, just a, such a tremendous point to drive home that yes. quitting at this point, it can, can do you a lot of good. If you give it up right now uh, and and God forbid you, you, you do, catch the coronavirus, uh, you give yourself a fighting chance. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for the information. It's really, uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, Dr. Hansa Bargava, pediatrician and uh, senior medical director at WebMD. Always good chatting with you. And uh, we have more information up at our website. It's coronavirusnow.com. I'm Alex Savage from KTVU Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. Take care.